welcome to Florence where history, art, and culture come alive around every corner. Nestled in the heart of Tuscany, this Italian gem beckons world travelers like you with this world-renowned masterpiece. It's this amazing architecture and delicious cuisine. But when should you visit? How do you get here? How to get around? Where to stay? And what to see and do? In this essential guide to Florence, I hope to answer all those questions and more to give you the guide, the information that you can refer to before taking off and for when you're here on the ground, roaming the streets and feasting on the foods. Now, how do you get here to Florence? Well, if you're already in Italy, I suggest you come by train. That's gonna be the easiest thing for you to do. Come here to the main train station, Santa Maria Novella, SMN. This right here, this is the train station. It's just steps away from the center, places like the Duomo. Now, if you're coming by flight, you're gonna to go to the FLR, the main Florence airport, and that's around seven and a half kilometers or five miles from the center of town. How you get from the airport to Florence? Well, it's simple. You exit the airport, turn right, and down there you'll find the taxi stand. Jump in a taxi, and in about 25 to 30 minutes, you're in the center of town. Oh, I love this train station. Otherwise, if you're traveling light and you have some extra time, well, go out of the airport, turn left, and go to the light rail train. That train will take you from the airport right here to the center of town and drop you off at the train station. Now, if you're going by the taxi option, in Italy, we don't have Grab, we don't have Uber, so you gotta go by the taxi. Now, the taxi, expect to pay 25 to 30 euro. They're quite a ripoff here in Italy, and I try to avoid taxis at all cost. But if you must, the taxi, that's the price you're gonna pay. You can't beat places like, look, look at this white and black marble. This is a Santa Maria Novella church. They named the train station after. It's just over on the other side of the church. Where do you wanna stay when you're here in Florence? Well, the, Florence is divided into two parts by the River Arno, the north side and the south side. On the north side, well, that's the old, the really old town, the area of the Duomo. If you stay around the Duomo, you're gonna be in the heart of the action. Everything's out the door and you can find everything from your hotel or your Airbnb there. Now you wanna be warned, however, because it's gonna be more expensive and they're gonna be more tourists in that area. Here are my suggestions. On the north side of the river, I would suggest just north of the Duomo area, Annunziata. That area has some good bargains and you're just steps away from the action. Or the Santa Croce area to the east. I recommend staying just to the east of the Santa Croce church. The area is named after that beautiful church there. Over there, you're gonna find some more local areas. You're gonna feel like a local in that area. There are less tourists and you're gonna get better prices. But my number one place to stay, I recommend staying on the south side of the river. Now, there's a two different locations I would recommend. One is San Nicolo. It's nestled just below the hills of Piazzale Michelangelo. This little nook of a neighborhood, you're gonna find great bars and great restaurants there. Although it's quite tiny and, and hotel and Airbnb places are gonna be limited there. A big bigger area and a place is my number one spot to stay is the Santo Spirito area, the Ultra Arno area. There, yeah, it's the Palazzo PT area. It's full of restaurants, bars, artisan workshops. You can get some good bargains there and you feel like a local. How to book? Well, as I see it, you have two options. Aggregate websites like Kayak, Expedia, or Booking.com that'll list out all the hotels and the prices. Or the other option is Airbnb. If you wanna stay in some of these beautiful apartments that are around Florence, go that route. Now with Booking.com and some of those aggregate websites, those are great. If you're gonna stay for one or two nights, well, book into a hotel. It's just easier. You have reception usually 24 hours a day. Someone to see you in, see you out. You have the breakfast option available for you as well. You have someone to make up your room as well. Now, if you're staying over two days, two nights, I would recommend going with the Airbnb option because you're gonna get a little bit better rates and then you have the option to not only stay in hotels because they list hotels on Airbnb, but also you can stay in some of these local apartments and 
feel, get a sense of what it's like to be an Italian living in Florence now with Airbnb. What are the positives? Well, you get things like a kitchen. So if you want to stay home one night or one morning, you can have breakfast or you can have dinner in your Airbnb. Also, if you're a bigger family and you need more space, well, Airbnb, that's your better option because you're getting an apartment with multiple rooms where you can spread out, just get comfortable. And when you're here for four or five days or more, that's important. to see and do. Florence is not as big as the cities of Milan or Rome, but being the Renaissance capital packs a big punch for such a small town. Now, as I see it, there are four essential items you should see and do when you're here in Florence. Number one, of course, is the Duomo. Go in the cathedral, go up into the cupola, to see the big view of Florence. Also, if you have time, go to the Giotto Tower, the Giotto Tower right next to the Duomo. The other one, the big one, is Michelangelo's Statue of David. So good. Go to the Academia, see the beautiful statue everybody talks about, and it's Michelangelo's big piece of art. Oh, excuse me. On the Duomo, on the statue of Michelangelo, make sure you reserve tickets in advance because especially in the tourist season, you're gonna have to wait in line if you don't book in advance. And that's the same for Uffizi, the Uffizi Art Gallery. And that's my number three of four. Make sure you book in advance, but spend some time, a half day, a full day, roaming the gallery, seeing all the artwork. You can really get lost in there and just explore all the Renaissance pieces, everything they have to offer. Now, number four on the list of must-sees, of course, is the famous Ponte Vecchio that spans the River Arno. That's the old bridge, the only bridge that remained after World War II. That's why they call it Ponte Vecchio. It's also the first big bridge that crossed the River Arno. Go cross the bridge, explore it. Also, go to Ponte Santa Trinita, get your photo from there of Ponte Vecchio. And those are the four essential items. Mm. Love Italy. Grazie, ciao. ciao grazie. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> they just subscribed. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. Click down below. Join the community so you're updated every time I'm posting a new video. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you're getting enjoyment and getting some useful content out of it. Now, the non-essential list, if you have more than one day, if you have two, three, four days, here's my list of things you should do. Number one, or well, in no order, Palazzo Pitti. It's in the Ultra Arno area. There you can see the Palazzo. Go inside and see how the Medici lived. And then behind it is the massive Boboli Gardens. And in that garden, you can roam for hours. It's perfect in the early mornings or the late afternoons, especially if you're in the hot summer months. Also, if you want, take in a bottle of wine and a little picnic because you can, you can sit down there, spread yourself out, and you get a view of the city and you can have lunch or just a little cup of wine. Now, the other area I recommend, and number two on my list, would be going up to Piazzale Michelangelo. And that should probably really be on the essential list, but if you're rushed for time, maybe you won't be able to fit it in. Piazzale Michelangelo, up there, there's a bronze copy of the Statue of David. And up there is the perfect place to watch the sunset over Florence. You go up there, you take a bottle of wine with you or some beers, or you buy it when you're up there. You sit on the steps, listen to the musicians play, and watch the sunset on what had been a great day in Florence. It's a romantic spot. It's a perfect spot for those photos and a great place to see all of Florence spreading out to the north and the mountains above. Fiesole, etc. Visit Santa Croce Cathedral, over 600 years old, with this Gothic revival facade out front, this beautiful piazza where you can sit and relax. And every June, they have the Calcio Storico football matches. It's this beat em up, punch, punch football match. It's pretty cool to see and so typical of Florence. Inside, some famous people are buried. There are their tombs inside. Galileo, Michelangelo's inside there, and others. There's also painting statues. Spend some time in there. I think you're going to enjoy it. In fact, before coming to Florence, we were also, yes. you know. YouTube fans, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Where are you from? India. India. Awesome. Yeah. And did they help? You got the whole yeah. family here. Yeah. <laughs> so we watched your video. They helped. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you very much.
All right, this is the other place I'm thinking that should be on your list. It's uh, Mercato Centrale. Yeah, and it's, it's a pretty cool place because inside there are all these little bars and restaurants on the second floor, what we call here the first floor. So you can escape the heat or escape the cold in the winter, go up there, find some food, different sorts of stalls, you can find the food you want. Downstairs are all these fruit and vegetable, meat vendors, butchers, and uh, fish shops as well. You can walk around, take some photos. Outside you'll see these beautiful market areas selling souvenirs, tourist items, leather goods, things you can take home with you. Other items, other things you should do, well, go on a pasta making class, join a group to learn how to make pasta here in Florence, go wine tasting at some of the local bars here in Florence. You don't have to leave Florence, you can wine taste here in the center of Florence. Further afield, if you have more days or if you're inclined to do it in your first couple of days, go on a Vespa tour, join a group and tour the local hills around Florence on a Vespa or rent one with you and your friend and head out of town and cruise those vineyards to the south of Florence heading towards Siena. Join a Fiat 500 group tour. There you'll have some fun in one of those Italian classic cars. And another item that you can do is from that train station where we were before today, you could take a train to some of the local villages nearby. I'm talking about Pisa with this famous tower, Luca with this famous oval square, or other little towns that dot the countryside of Tuscany. We are up inside Mercato Centrale, the central market. What to eat? Well, everything when you're here in Florence and when you're in Italy. And like every little town, every little area in Italy, Florence is known for some particular dishes. In Florence, one of the must-eats is the Bistecca alla Fiorentina. It usually comes in one kilo minimum size. Get prepared to feast on that big gun. That's a lot of meat and don't get it well cooked, well done, get it rare. That's the way you eat it here in Italy. The other, any sort of pasta with the wild boar ragu, that's the big beast that they call a cignale. Now typically this pasta with that ragu of cignale is served with the pappardelle pasta, this big flat ribbon pasta. So you'll get it with that pasta. If not, ask for that pasta. That's the typical way to get the cignale ragu. The other item, of course, is the schiacciata, that flat bread, oily, salty. They make it into a sandwich often, and you can find it anywhere from some of the street vendors. One of the big places to go is on Via dei Neri, and over there you get Antico Vinayo and several other vendors where you can get your schiacciata on. Yeah. And of course, El Emperadotto. This is the fourth and final stomach of a cow. Would you eat that? Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty good. And it comes with that green sauce. It's been marinated in onions, in celery, cooked for a long time. It's soft, it's chewy. And if you want to take it plain, you could take it plain. But I also like to have it with that green sauce and a little bit of salt on top. And of course, gelato, why not? It's an Italian thing, but also gelato was invented here in Florence. Drinks, yes, I'll have some. This is one of the best things to do in Italy from the hours of six on to 8 p.m. is have an aperitivo, sitting outside a bar, watching the world go by, enjoying some bar food and a drink in your hand. Now the big famous drink to have here in Florence is the Negroni. It was invented here with a little bit of gin and oh, it's perfect. And if you want to have wines, well, yes, Sangioveses, Vicchiantis, Brunellos, Bulgaris, <laughs> the Super Tuscans. Don't get me talking about white wines though. We're having none of that. What should be your itinerary, your length of stay? Well, I remember the first time that I was here, I stayed just for one night, a couple of days, and it was way too short. Ideally, you're gonna spend three or four days in Florence, and if you can, spend five or six, or even a couple of weeks, to, just to really get to know this and the local, I gotta find my area here, outside the market of, of uh, Mercato Centrale, we're in the San Lorenzo area, we even our way through these little market stalls. If you can, you can spend a couple of weeks, really get to know Florence and the other little villages around Florence. With that extra time, you're not rushed, and you can get out and do some of those other things, like a Vespa tour, like seeing some of the vineyards to the south, or like going up to the hilltop to Fiesole, that little town 
that's above Florence. Okay, I have Julia here to help me with some basic Italian phrases. Arrivederci. Buongiorno. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao. So basically she ran us through some of the basics. Ciao means hello, goodbye. Buongiorno, you say that till about midday, I think, and then you go buonasera, which also means hello or goodbye, and when you're saying goodbye in a formal tense, you say arrivederci. Now, if someone's speaking to an Italian and you don't understand, you can say non parlo italiano, I don't speak Italian, or if you want to ask them if they speak English, you can say parli inglese, parli inglese, and they're just looking at me. I don't think they speak English, so that means do you speak English? Parli inglese. Some basic phrases like that will help you out. And if you need a phrase book, I listed one downstairs in the description, a phrase book I like to use when I'm traveling around Italy. Buongiorno. When should you visit? Any time of the year is a great time to visit this town of Florence, but there are some things to consider, some months to consider. In the summertime, in July, in August, it gets pretty darn hot especially in August, and in August you also have to consider a lot of people go on vacation and a lot of these places are closed. Also, in the wintertime, December, late December, early January, a lot of people are closed for the holidays as well. My preferred month to visit Florence, to visit Italy, well, it's in September. That's when I recommend coming here. Other than that, you could try coming in October or the spring months, and I'm thinking April, May, and into June before it gets too hot. Now, one thing to consider is you need to be covered health insurance wise when you're traveling, if anything should happen. And I've been using Safety Wing, their Nomad insurance, and it covers you globally when you're traveling around the world. You can buy it before you depart. You can also buy it after you've departed as well. It'll also cover you for short stints when you're back at home. There's a link to sign up to go check out their website in the description below. stress this enough, travel light. And if you can, go with the backpack. I'm not talking about the big backpacks you'd use if you're going through a vacation up in the Italian Alps. I'm talking about a small backpack. I see so many stressed out looking tourists pulling their bags over these cobbled paved streets. They're terrible and the tourists are tired trying to roll over these bad roads. The sidewalks are small and the pavement is poorly laid, the cobbles are coming out everywhere, you gotta watch out, you could even twist your ankle. So travel light and travel far. I recommend a small carry-on bag if you're doing a three to five day trip. I listed down below the bags I use. I use a Remoa carry-on bag when I have a three to five day trip. For a one, two, or three week trip, I carry a Samsonite hard shell case. I know that you can't find some of those in other countries like the United States, so I listed other options down below. But the point is, don't overpack. Don't throw in too many clothes. Don't throw in too many shoes. Just pack the essentials and you'll be happy you did. Have you heard, I'm putting out a regular email newsletter with travel tips and hacks and other sort of exclusive information that you may not find here in the videos. There's a link to join up down in the description below. Also, while you're down there, become a YouTube channel member, get customized emojis, prioritize replies to your comments, and early bird viewing to my videos even before they're made available to the public. When to leave and where to go. I already spoke about an itinerary for here in Florence, but where do you go to next? Well, if you don't have a flight out of Florence, I suggest you take a train. From here, you can go almost anywhere, well, in fact, anywhere in Italy. What you could do is take the train north to Bologna, explore that city, eat some of its great pasta with its ragu, and then go further on northeast to Venice. Or if you have a flight out of Malpensa in Milan, you can make a trip up to Milan, spend a couple days there, and then catch your flight home from Malpensa. The same with Rome down to Fumicino. Head south to Rome, or better yet, once you're down to Rome, go on further south to Naples for a two-day trip, come back up to Rome, and catch your flight out of Rome. Now this information and more is available in my Italy Essential Travel Guide, an e-guide that you can download have in your pocket offline for when you're traveling around Italy. I also made a dining guide as well. There are links to those down in the description below. 
Florence is one of those must-see places, and for many, it's the number one place to see in Italy. So go on a diet, get ready to feast, pack your bags, and just get out there and go. And if you want to know more in Italy, check out this video here.